That Sony one was interesting. We yeah. often uh, we get discouraged from using things that connotate some historical. As I say, like in musical terms, if you were to use some historical like a sonnet, like, there's all whole heaps of like, social and historical background that go with it, and you've got to try and work around it in the best way you can. It's just going to compose a Think about that. Oh, think about that at all. Yeah, normally, normally I kind of try and avoid form, but I thought it'd be interesting to just uh, completely invert form because sometimes it can really work for you working within form um, because it forces you to confess your ideas a bit, and so you don't just waffle on aimlessly, which is why I like short poems because uh, otherwise they just go on forever and ever. If you, especially if you write them without form, like that one about the swastika was in Iambic pentameter. And it worked really well. But most of the others were just uh, whatever I felt like writing in that day. There's an uh, anthology of um, contemporary sonnets, um, many of which potentially you wouldn't recognise necessarily as sonnets. Some of them are actually lines and painted, and some of them have more than 14 lines. Um, and some of them are prose, and they are. They're really interesting, for, and I'll put it a link up actually on if anybody's interested in seeing them. Because working within constraints is but interesting. Do you not get worried that you're suddenly going, you're suddenly landing yourself with Shakespeare? No. Like Shakespeare wrote science, so are you as good as Shakespeare to write science? It doesn't worry, no. Oh, I mean, I think there, there is that freight that, is, that the form carries, yes. But no, I mean, I think in some ways, it's, I'm linking up with what Vicky was talking about, what you were talking about with Vicky. Um, I remember when I started um, seriously writing poetry and that anxiety sort of kicking in about how good was it? What do you have to do to qualify? How do you be one? And one of my friends said to me, well, what do you expect? You're going to walk into a room in some kind of velvet cloak on and say, oh, look, there's Carol the Poet. Um, <laughs> how does it work? And in fact, the, the, the answer was, you just, you just do it. You, 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 you're invested in a kind of a practice. And, and I think anything is up for grabs that includes sonnets, that includes all sorts of forms. Mm -hmm. um, you just, you do it. I, I think that's really good. I, I, would, I would interrogate your assertion, then that you were encouraged not to engage with secret forms. <laughs> 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 I mean, do, do, I mean do, do the composers feel that they've been encouraged to not to engage with received form? And like the yes. marks will not be. <laughs> I think I think symphony has um, an air of anxiety about it, um, but other forms not necessarily. But so, there's something about the symphony because there's so much written and analysed about them, and you know, not that you were not that it, well, not that I've been reviewed anyway, but you know the critics would say. This is the symphony. It's like there was a concerto for orchestra written. They were like, that's not Bartok. Yeah. I think that this is definitely um, a whole week. I think it's a really great uh, subject for uh, one discussion about our relationship with the received forms, both the poets and composers and all the anxieties, but maybe people bringing work which they think creatively engages with the received form. And, and the cliches as well, I think it would be really interesting to hear what either all three of us as the groups are terrified of creating what cliches we're terrified of stumbling past and the accidentally creating it. But if we actually have a session we actually kind of grab those by the throat and see or you know place them head on see what try and write the maybe the worst poem you've ever written or do everything you're not supposed to or try not to do. Work with that as well as we see for um, so the same quick question actually but so didn't get your name. Frank. Frank, sorry. Um, at the beginning when you said you don't read your poetry how much to people or you don't like showing people, were you like in the mood or were you being serious? Uh, well, I like showing it to them when they say, wow, that's fantastic, you're a genius. Okay. I kind of hate it when they go, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, I've hardly ever shown any poetry to anybody. And so why, why, I didn't say original, I'm a question, but why do you write poetry? 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 Why do you write Why do you write is it for no for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Just to see what it looks like. <laughs> and visually or how what the product the end result is like? Yeah, just to see what happens. Okay. You know. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I mean I've um, I think from a singing point of view we always when someone's 
presenting their work, you part of you is always kind of looking at it as a performance in a way. I don't think it's just you try and turn it off. But you know, it's like film directors watching the film. And um, I just because I really I really enjoyed your work a lot. It's, I, I found you apologize for yourself every time you see someone that was yours. And I just found that interesting because I thought it was really beautiful work. Um, but then I felt silly for thinking that after you then kind of think, mm. oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's just, it's just interesting because I think in some way I think we all do it in some way. It's, it's quite interesting, is it Little Price who um, was what, uh, an interview with her when she said, um, you know, you, whenever you sing it should be a present to yourself because it's only when you're kind of truly happy with it that then you can really, that others can enjoy it mm. kind of thing as well. The funny thing I noticed on Saturday, though, to rather turn that backwards, is how apologetic every single was. When you yeah, laughed. totally, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal, and obviously for somebody who has no sense of it, uh, in terms of methodology. To notice a t and then the whole body manner changes, and it's one of like, oh, I know I've made the mistake. I didn't know. <laughs> the person had just blown through, I wouldn't have noticed. That happened maybe five times. Mm. Uh, everyone was saying it's 11 a.m. It's mean something to, to, to <laughs> kind of know that there's a difference between singing at 11 or 6. Yeah. So I, I think that's more down to personality than medium. And I think that poets are not the same kind of stringency that singers have in terms of performance. We can fudge up and you can't. Mm. But then art is poetry written to be performed. Exactly. You know, it, might, be, it might just be written to be read, it might just be written to just be you know indulged by someone just to just to sit there and read it. It doesn't. It's not. Would you guys see it as a performative thing, or is that there's, there's, specific? There's, the there's something. Or? I think there's something crucial that you lose if you just hear a poem performed, and there's something crucial that you lose if you just mm. read a poem as yeah, well. And I yeah. think they, they both. Um, you, you need elements of both mm. to fully appreciate a poem. Yeah, I think I, I wouldn't say that you know, a poem should be performed and not read, or it should be read and not yeah. performed. But I think they necessarily go hand in hand. And ideally, a particular poem you'd hear both, you'd see both on the page, and you'd hear it performed. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have a much fuller impression of it than if you just did one course. I think performance is secondary. Actually, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a huge debate in philosophy. Very dark spoken word and the word read. You know, your access to it. To be honest, I really do think that work on the paper that you can spend time with, that you can interpret, that mm. you can read is far more important than hearing it. I don't think you can hear half the poems that you hear. Mm. It, it's very, it very, very much depends as the it depends. Of course. Yeah, it's very, I'm just giving my opinion. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's such a range of practice and I think one of the interesting things um, is to listen to the inarticulacy. Um, in mm. other words, it's, it's actually very, very difficult, I think, for poets or anybody actually to describe or find a language for their own practice. You know, you may know what its pitch is, that is it's what it's moving towards, but it may actually be some kind of process that you can't exchange. And having done collaborative work with a sound musician, one of what we had to do, it was very interesting, um, we had a really interesting set of exchanges, but we kind of agreed at one point that we wouldn't try and explain where we were coming from, we would just do it. Mm -hmm. So we swapped sounds, or I went on to garage band. And we learned how to use SoundCloud and send him stuff. And that, that it worked through that, through practice. Because in fact, there was a fundamental private kind of inarticulacy, which was part of the engine of what we were doing, both of us. And to be able to sit with that, that to feel comfortable, is really what's great about collaboration when it really works. You is don't. Have all creative mediums. Probably, yeah. I don't know. I think it's only the academic. No, 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 it's not. Instinct, a, think, no, 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 it's not. Those things. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, maybe. I think most people don't know why they do things. They do them <coughs> and we academically form a structure around well, because we enjoy people, them. I think people do things as a self therapy because a lot of the time I think people are apologising for their work. They obviously want someone to do it. So I'm talking like perhaps from a composer poet point of view rather than a singer, though I think singing is a lot to do with therapy <coughs> in a way. But a composer or a, or a poet may write something, it's a lot to do with their thoughts, their emotions, their experiences what they think about something. And as a lot of the poets have said, it's they're trying to put something onto paper or at least trying to get something out in some sort of term. I don't know if you can describe it. So it could be seen as, no matter what, how it's interpreted, that kind of process from, it could be kind of therapy. And it could, but it can also be about performance. And there might be some kind of, you know, inner, I mean, 
in the school going on. Or actually, a lot of poets do, do work through performance. It's performance that produces the work. So it, it, we are talking about, I guess it's the same when you're thinking about compositional practice. And it's such a variegated field that we're all in. And some, even within individual works, you are one, some work may be absolutely performance driven, and others might not. Um, you might see yourself as a poet uh, on YouTube and think, oh my god, which was an experience I had. Um, and that changes the way you do, you perform your work. And then you learn through doing that what's happened to the ear. You can, you can work through the ear just as, I guess, a composer might. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it depends. That's what's fantastic about it. Can I ask the poets, uh, I participated in watch works four years ago. And uh, all the poets except one, they actually gave us printout of their poems. And today, none of you actually gave us a print of their poetry. And none of you actually wanted us to read it. If it is equally important, or even more, why some extent everybody actually decided today to perform? Like for me, this has a great impact, first of all, because it's hard for me to get half of what you are performing because of my language barrier. But it is a completely different experience. And isn't this decision is kind of, you know, it's five years almost past. But uh, does it have to do with the individual or does it have to do with the trend? Or does it have to do with the way you see your work? I think it's to do with the context as much as anything else. Um, you know, in a, in a context where you're there to present your work to other people, I think quite a lot, of, well, personally, I, I didn't really want to give out a score, if you like, because people would be reading that and not listening to the performance, and I wanted the performance to be my presentation. Yeah. So. I mean, to some extent, I could read it for 30 seconds or five minutes and then listen to it from the USF. As uh, John said, uh, I think you read the poem to do something crucial and well, you listen to you know, No, I don't, I, don't think you, I don't think you necessarily lose something crucial. I think what, you get a different experience. So the... the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so focused. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think we've, I think we've, we've had uh, some years where people have mostly performed, some years where people have given hands to and then we've in between, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think it depends if I would be my slightly like bit more answer. <laughs> I think it was kind of made uh, soundy to me anyway from my perspective that as if the poets were to stand up and give a reading, not mm -hmm. necessarily give out this quote, it's kind of just the perception. And also in a way when being set to music about the sound world that inhabits in yeah. a way, I think, um, for what's going on here in a sense. Yeah. Has it stopped? Yeah, it's fine, uh, we're we putting it here. Just a couple of things. One is uh, to just remind you again to please join the
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. <laughs>